Hello? 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 All you followers that keep joining has been with me since day one. Thank you very much. This is the third live Instagram. We started this. We started in Iran, and then we moved to Turkey. And now we have another special guest who will introduce himself and let him know the country in which he's calling from. But before you speak, brother, let me say thank you very much for coming on the call. I greatly appreciate it. Follow thank you. Your heart. No, thank you. Now, followers, send him some love. Send him some thumbs up. He's going to ask me some questions. I'm going to ask him some questions, and we're going to take questions from you, the followers. So, brother, thank you. Take it away. Oh, okay, so, DJ Will, like, thanks for the invitation, too. And, uh, well, so, let me introduce myself. So, um, I was born in Colombia. I, I'm Colombian. And, uh, well, so, since, uh, since I was, you know, a very young kid, I really wanted to go to another country. So when I was like around 17 years old, I traveled to England and I was living there in England and uh, I learned English there. And then I came back to Colombia. I was living in Medellin. Then um, I wanted to go to the States. So, you know, I have some friends over there, some contacts and I started and I got a job in the United States. So I went there and I was living and working in the United States. And um, well, I mean, you know, it's, it's been such a such an awesome experience. Now then when I came back to Colombia, I was like 20, 20, 21, more or less. And I started working as well, you know, in some, you know, English schools, like helping other people, sharing my experience, like the way I learned it. And uh, it's been, you know, such an amazing experience as well. This about teaching, you know, I mean, it's like, it's so cool because you can uh, share your experience and, 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 and you know the other people as well. I mean, they share their experiences too. And it's you know, like an interchange. So it's like so cool. Uh, I've been just having fun all the time with the students now and it's like such an amazing experience. And um, then, you know, like, uh, then I just decided to, to start just doing it by myself, like, you know, like private lesson. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think it's, I, I love this. I love doing this. <laughs> and it's it's, it's well, such a good experience. I love it. Well, teacher, so that's really great. The, the thing, you're doing great. You just didn't tell the followers what your name was, bro. <laughs> you said we were from Colombia and you went to yeah. the UK and you went to America. But, like, yeah, 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 you're right. I know your name. Yeah, so to all the followers, uh, my name is Andrew. Okay, so, well, actually, yeah, my, my, name is, my name is Andres. But all the people that they know me, they know me as Andrew, because, you know, because of this of English. So, uh, my name is Andrew, guys. Glad to meet you. Hello to everybody over there, you know, all the followers. I'm uh, glad to be with you guys. And um, hope, you know, we can just help you with any questions uh, that you, you, you may have. All right, good. So, I called you Andres, even though you called yourself Andrew. Uh, yeah. So, here's, here's the... Which do you prefer that I call you, Habibi? What do you prefer to call you? Andres or Andrew? Which one? Andrew. I mean, everybody know, knows me as Andrew. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. So, Teacher Andrew. Yeah, cool. So, followers, if you're just joining, uh, Teacher Andrew is currently in, uh, he is a teacher in Colombia. Okay? Yeah. And uh, so, we hear, sorry, we, we, sorry, DJ Will, uh, there is something like a, misspelling because you know most of the, the the people they say Columbia but it turns out that it's not Columbia it's Columbia it's like C-O-L-O because <laughs> actually there's there's a state in, in, in the United States which is Columbia wait, 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 right? wait, wait. I got a question is it C I spelled it C-O-L O C O L O M. oh my god yeah. sorry all the people you know like when, when they when I uh, I told them about Colombia they say ah Columbia no, but yeah, it's yeah. Colombia. Well, now yeah, you can speak Spanish, and I apologize. See, the good thing about Teacher Will is when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. All right, Andrew, check it. So, if you're joining, Andrew is a teacher in Colombia, went to, had an opportunity to study in the UK, English, and then he had an opportunity to travel in the United States. He came back to his country, and now he's, is he's an English teacher. 
First question, are you doing private tutoring? You teach it online, English school, both, all of the above, which one? Yeah, well, so I was, I started uh, by teaching in like uh, uh, schools, you know, English schools. Um, but then I just decided to do it by my own. So now what I do is like private lessons online. And um, you know, like I have kind of like, uh, you know, like, Kind of a school that I have in here, so I just do it in here as well. So, but it's on, on, on my own now. I mean, in the past, I was working in some school, you know, English schools, uh, school uh, English academies and stuff. But now I just doing it by myself through online. And, uh, you know, like people who live like where I'm living right now, so they just come over here too. That makes sense. So, you had the opportunity to uh, go to different countries or their own. What did those countries, you know, how did living in America or living in the UK uh, shape how you are now? Like, did you have any uh, perceptions of like the UK or America? So you actually lived it because there are some people, if they can afford it, they want to go abroad. So how have, how has you living abroad shaped and made you a better teacher? Uh, well, you know, I mean, um, uh you know, I've been to England and I've been to the United States, um, like English speaking countries. Uh, well, so your question like how this like uh, give me the shape that I'm a teacher now? Yeah, like, or better yet, let me ask you like this. What is it? Were you surprised about anything when you went to the UK or when you went to America? Okay, well. Let me, let me say it like this. I mean, the first time that I traveled to the, like, the first time I traveled, uh, I didn't know English at all, like nothing, like zero English, you know? Um, so I went there because, you know, I have a cousin who lives there. So um, all the time I used to hang out with him. And uh, I mean, he didn't speak Spanish like much, just somewhere. So I had to, I had to learn English. So I was with, uh, you know, hanging out with my cousin. We, we went to some cafeterias, to some restaurants, to some, you know, like sometimes to, to dance. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like the way, the way I learned it was so cool. And I really, you know, like, like it because actually it's kind of a natural way. I mean, you know, like I've all the time tell my students, like the best way to learn a language is become a baby again. Like just look, listen, repeat. I mean, that's the easiest way. So I was with my cousin all the time, hanging out with him, like walking in restaurants and cafeterias and listening the vocabulary and the expressions. And then I just started to repeat them and people understood me. So I was like, okay, this is working. <laughs> so then uh, I came back to Colombia. I knew like English. So I started just um, helping some, you know, English schools. And then I went to the States to work. And that was an another experience. And I can see in this, I mean, uh, I really like England, I really like the States, but um, I rather the States because it's kind of a multicultural country, you know, I mean, you, you find people from all over the world. I mean, you can find people in England too, but it's, you know, m the majority of the people from all around the world is in the United States. I mean, and that's something that I really like it because, you know, when I was in the United States, I had the opportunity to meet people from all over the world to know about their culture and you not know, to, yeah, to, to, to enrich my knowledge too. So to know more about those countries and yeah, it's, it's been an amazing, it's been amazing. What, uh, what, where in the U.S. were you? What state or what city? Well, it's mainly, well, see, in different places, but mainly states, uh, mainly I had in, in Connecticut and Massachusetts. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever been to Chicago? Sorry? Did you have a chance to visit Chicago? That's where I, when I go yeah. back to the city. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I have, I have a friend and I'm sometimes we went over there. Uh, not that long, but because, you know, ma mainly I was in, I, I, I like Boston. So I was, I yeah, was yeah, over yeah. there most of the time. Uh, New York, uh, yeah, you know, several, you know, villages and uh, small towns over there. Actually, they, they are beautiful. I mean, I really like, you know, what, as well, mm -hmm. something that I like is as well the people. I mean, you know, like sometimes, when you are here, I'm gonna say in another country, they say no, but you know, like maybe Americans are like, oh, they are not kind. <laughs> they are like not expressive. Well, actually, a little bit not expressive, because <laughs> we like Latin Americans, we like like to hug, you know, hey, how you doing? And we, like, right, right. For other people, like 
what is this? <laughs> so, no, but I think, Andrew, I think the good thing is, is that, you know, you had a opportunity and a chance to actually experience a different culture for yourself. And I could say, yeah. as someone who is an American who lives in Saudi, and then as, as someone who goes back, you know, you got to experience the culture for yourself. So followers, it's, if you're joining for me for the first time, I say if you have an opportunity actually to live or work in a country different from your own, I highly, highly recommend you do it, at least for me. It changed my life and exposed me to a different culture. So here's the deal. Now that you're now that you're a teacher, what do you like about it? I mean, I like I like to talk to people. I like to you know, I mean, there is something that I discover doing this now and it's the following. It turns out like when I was working in like English school, like English academies, you know, they have a curriculum, you know. I mean we have to follow the rules, you know, all the time is kind of the traditional things. And I saw something, I mean, most of the students in, you know, some schools, they don't like that methodology. <laughs> so mm. they are like, sometimes, you know, they get bored, they say, mm, I have to do this again. <laughs> so, you know, and I was just looking that while well, I was working in some English schools and I decided to, okay, so I mean, people don't like this, so what do they like? So then I started just talking to them, asking them questions and, uh, you know, like uh, they told me all the time, like, for example, they, they like, I mean, everybody likes to have fun, uh, to spend a good moment. So I was like, okay, so how do you have fun? Like, um, then I was just talking to them and then I was just uh, asking them questions about their lives. Um, you know, that their likes too, like what do they like? And um, so then I just started just having like a kind of the way that I learned it. Because I was telling you teacher, well, the, the first time that I learned was just, you know, like read plans like cafeterias, restaurants, talking to my cousin about my day, my life, what is easy, what is difficult for me. And I think like it's kind of becoming a friend with the student, you know, in sort of way. So they will feel like more confident to talk. And, uh, you know, I mean, like that's the good thing about like something that I learned with like if you just give them that confidence, that um, space, I mean, they will, they will, they will speak because most of the students they are afraid of you know like they are ashamed about speaking because they say oh maybe i don't say this because i mispronounce this word or maybe i don't say this because i said it wrong so the point is like to take that fear out and to to help them to speak you know so i think that's something that i learned when i was working at english school and then i decided to quit and started my own thing and now what i do is just have fun with my students. I mean, have have a good moment, you know, like talk about their day, talk about like their life, you know, like what they like, what they don't like. And, and they are like, okay, Andrew, I like this, I like that. Oh, but I think this and I think that. And they are, they are you know, like willing to talk, which is awesome. Right. Now, to your point, what, uh, do you have any, like, uh, how do you, for someone who might be on the call, and likes your way of and style of just like being a friend, being a student, and they come to you and say like, "Oh, but I'm so shy, I can't speak." What do you say to them? Well, you know, I mean, I think like for example, several students when they come to me, like you know, like, they they say that. I mean, you know, like Andrew, but you know, I'm so shy. I mean, you know, first some some of them they come you know, like uh, with previous experience about being in an English school. Or, you know, and they are like, Andrew, I gotta tell you something. I'm kind of uh, difficult with English. I mean, I have some difficulties and I'm very shy and I kind of don't like it. So, and I'm like, okay, so what, the first thing that I try to do is like to, to know them a little bit better, uh, just to ask them like what they like so I can talk about the topics that they like. Um, like for example, I can tell you about my my last student. He is a um, he is a lawyer, you know. So um, uh, what I did was this, okay. So um, I have some articles about you know like law and stuff, or cases and stuff like that. So and then I was just asking them question like uh, like if he was like practicing law with me. <laughs> so I would just ask right, him right. questions about that. What should I do if this? in this situation so he was just thinking and uh, then trying to ask me for the vocabulary that he needed and then i was just giving giving him the vocabulary and then he just continued making the conversation 
And you know, at the end of the class, he was like, "Wow, I mean, I, I'm speaking." <laughs> and, and he was like, right. a, a, "Hey, Andrew, hold on a minute." Hey, L L O L O. It goes to the point that Teacher Andrew is saying. When you say can't, I would encourage you, sister, get that vocabulary out of your mind, saying that you can't do it. It's having the belief. It's hearing what Andrew is saying. It's having the belief that say. So it's great if you if you write English, and it's great if you understand English. It's what Andrew is saying. It's kind of like, hey, you know. You have to believe, like he said, and this goes to her and others. You have to believe. The first step is believing, and the second step is taking a step forward. I'm sorry, Andrew. I just wanted to say that. Sure, 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 sure. I mean, and, and that's another point. You know, like I, I really try to. You know, I have a, di a different kind of mindset. Uh, you know, I like to read a lot about that, and like the, like if we say we can, we are right, and if we say we can't. We are right to. <laughs> so um, you know, I try to encourage all the time to my students that they really can. I mean, you know, all of us we can. You know, like it's kind of uh, uh, goals that we have to set and you know work. And you know, something that I really tell my students is like love the process. Don't focus on like uh, get to the top and like oh I have to be speaking like this and I have to you know I want to speak fluent. I mean, the point is like. Every single student is different. I mean, every single person is different. So I mean, we learn in different ways. The point is, like, we have to learn to love the process. Like, while we are learning, you know, every single word, every single phrase, every single conversation, every single fun moment, and just enjoy it. And uh, you know, what? because I think it's very important. This when when people start enjoying and loving the process, they really feel like. Good. I mean, and right. that's something that really helped them to, you know, to to improve their English fast. In, you know, fast. exactly. And it's kind of yeah, exactly right. What you're saying. You got a comment from a, a follower, L A uh, Lady dot ninety nine. Step by step, exactly right. Yo, it's like you're hey English Pascana, hey Master, you're English, hey Max under uh, Max Teeter, and um, it's exactly. Exactly what you're saying, Andrew. It's like loving the process and loving what you do. So I got a question for you. What are um, talk about? Because uh, you learned it through immersion and you were lucky. What is your approach to grammar? Because I hear a lot of times people say, "I've taught Colombians, I've taught Brazilians, like in America, I've taught so whatever." What is your approach to grammar? Well, a lot of people think that they gotta know grammar to know English. So what's your thought on that? Okay, so mm, well, this is my point of view. You know, like I really believe grammar is important, like is a base. Okay, but like since my experience, like I can say, like it's better if you start learning like how to speak, like to listen it. You know, I mean, huh, you know, as I was telling to you, the teacher will like um, uh, every single baby in the world. Is not taught their language by a book, you know. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like I mean that 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 real life, you know. Cause, you know, like that's some of the things. Like may, many people, sometimes they just focus too much in grammar. I mean, I tell them, okay, it's good if you study grammar. It's good if you just read about it. I mean, that's nice. But I think it's better if you put it into practice. Like, if, I mean, you know, like the point, is like. I want people to make mistakes. I want people to use it. I mean, the more you make. Hold on, Andrew. Hold on, Andrew. Hold on. Public service announcement. Did you hear what the teacher said? He said it's okay to make mistakes. Did you catch it? So listen, followers. It's natural. It's not your native language. I'm sorry, Andrew. Go ahead. Sure, sure. You know, I mean, yeah, teacher. Well, I mean, that's that's the thing. I mean, you know, like some people is like. I don't want to speak. I don't want to try because I do it wrong. I mean, a baby doesn't speak perfect. <laughs> I mean, a baby just says like I don't know one word, and and the whole world understand what the baby is trying to say. You know, like I don't know, like I don't know. Tiny, you, think, you know what? And, well, I think my thought on that, Andrew, is I think what happens is is that um, people get so. Um, People get so bogged down, and it's like what you're saying. They care about what other thinks, and also, they—it's it's exactly what you're saying. Having the mentality of a child, 
you know, when I was learning French, it was okay, I made mistakes, blah, blah, blah. I had that same apprehension. It's kind of like, you know what, it's like exactly what you're saying. Putting your mindset in the mindset of like, hey, let me act like a child, let me act like a baby. I'm not going to care what people think about me. And particularly, I think I said this on a previous call, I don't know, I think you touched about it, but I would want to hear your opinion. I think sometimes, uh, I did a video a long time ago, but people play negative tapes, and sometimes in my experience, people care more about what other people are thinking about themselves as it relates to English. And people not, you know, people learning English can sometimes be extremely hard on each other. So, but it's exactly what you're saying. It's kind of like learning and have fun with the language, things of that nature. Before you ask me questions, because I know you want to ask me questions, what are some of your favorite, do you have like a, any favorite English words or like what are your three like what are your favorite words off the top of your head in English that you like? Like like the, the my favorite words you mean? Yeah, do you have like any favorite words or that you like at all? Like for mine, I like passionate. I like really. Any favorite words that like really like get you? Um. Well, <laughs> that's a good question. I I haven't thought about it. Like, what are my favorite words? Uh. Well, you know, I think like one word which is like was like so I don't know mm, curious for me. Like I was I was I was living in the state back then, and I was just walking in Manhattan, and you know, a friend told me like, "Hey, Andrew, this park is humongous." <laughs> so the word humongous, I I never heard it before back then, and I was like, "Wow!" I mean, I, I really understood what she meant was very very big. Uh, right. That was the word that I, I, I never had it. I was like, wow, humongous. I mean, I remember that I started using, I, I stopped using my, you know, like very big or huge, and I started using humongous all the time. So that was very funny because every single time that I see something very big, I'm like, oh, that building is humongous. Oh, look at that house, is humongous. <laughs> so I was just using it a lot. I remember that word. So maybe that's kind of my favorite word. But I think, hey, Emma, but that's, I think, the thing. I mean, followers, listen, look what he just did was, is that he just, uh, uh, okay, you got a question from uh, English Viscana. You got a question from English, oh, whoa, he left. He left. What happened, Andrew? You left. Wait, we're getting Andrew back. So, followers, if you're just joining, this is Teacher Will, and we're here with, okay, he's back. I was like, what happened, bro? We're gonna add him back. This is teacher Andrew, teacher Andrew. Hello, Reza. Teacher Andrew is from Colombia. He is a teacher. What? Anyway, he's coming back. Teacher Andrew is from Colombia and he's had an experience of living in America and living in the UK where he learned. And currently right now, he is a teacher in Colombia. And okay, bro, I'm gonna invite you back. You disconnected. I was like, what happened? All right, hold on a minute. We're re-inviting it. Thank you very much. Waiting for Andrew to come back. So, uh, he has, so we're going to see it. Hold on a minute. What? Come on, Andrew. If it was interesting. If you were on with the call that I had today with the brother, uh, I, I shared his contact information. We had a teacher on the line from Turkey, and we was trying to join it, trying to join. His net is weak, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, thank you very much for the background. Hey, Fahad, how are you? Hold on, we're inviting him back. And uh, for some reason, I tried to add him to the call. He tried to add and he couldn't. And, um, and, come on, Net. Andrew? Oh, guys, sorry, sorry, I don't know what happened. I was like, what? Okay. I was like, Andrew, you were making a point, and then it was like, boom, boom. But hey, it yeah, happened. What happened? I think that there was another another app working on my cell phone. I think then that was you know didn't allow to connect again. I was like, what happened? So then I just disconnect everything and I would just log in again. And now you're back. All right. So um, sorry, what I was saying. Hey, hey, hey. No, what I was saying was is that you said you wanted to ask me some questions. Um, before you do that, see, look, English Piscana had a question. All right, and. Okay. Uh, she, yeah, yeah, her question was, uh, what is your cup of tea? She's a teacher from Russia, and she was asking, like, what's your cup of tea in teaching English? Oh, viva Colombia! Viva Colombia! Viva Colombia! <laughs> All right. 
So, yeah, she asked the question, what is your cup of tea? Like, what do you enjoy the most? Like, any subject or anything on any question? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Like, uh, what is my cup of tea? Like, yeah, so that's like an expression that we use where it's kind of like, what's your favorite subject or things to teach in English? Your favorite cup of tea? That's what she's asking. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, like, you know, I really, I really love, like, when I'm with my students, talk about, you know, like, passion in life, like passion about something like, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter if it is English, you know, you know, we have everybody of us, I think we have, you know, goals, we have something that we want to, you know, achieve. And I think, you know, like, that's kind of my cup of tea with them. Like, I really like to talk to them and, you know, like, advise them, you know, since my experience and, uh, because, you know, uh, as I was telling you, teacher, well, I, think I, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but I really like uh, to read, like, um, you know, books about people who already, like, they started from, from the bottom and they were hardworking, you know, and they now they, they have uh, achieved, like, high levels in life. And uh, I, I think, like, I really like to talk with them about passion, like, about passion in their, in their, their job, you know, their careers, and whatever they started in English when they are with me. I got a quick question for you. So here's the thing. You're a teacher and you've been teaching for a while now. Um, my question is, uh, uh, real quick, lady, I don't have a problem. No problem. Let's tell teacher Monica we're good. Listen, what's the, what do you, what area of development as a teacher, what, what do you think that you would like to improve on, if anything? Like for me, I know at times I need to, um, speak slower and uh at the advanced levels grammar what is what for you as a teacher would you like to improve on if anything yeah i mean you know like maybe grammar as well you know i mean uh i think sometimes you know like some i have like different types of students like so, some of them they really want to learn like how to speak um so i have a different methodology with them and some of them like for example uh are like more like into international tests and stuff like that so uh i try to you know like when i'm with those kind of students i try to really like learn and uh, and give the, the my 100 percent to them like the, the whole good experience about grammar because you know like sometimes about grammar for people is a little bit uh difficult or sometimes even annoying because it's like, yes, yeah, so, yes. so, so, so what I try to do is like um, take all that material uh, that I have, you know, for talking about grammar, and so try to think about like new ways for they to feel that better. Like I don't know, activity yeah. games maybe, um, you know, to use that in and uh, make it fun. Because I mean, grammar is not like <laughs> you know, it's people that like. Yeah, yeah, that's the word. I mean, you know, people say, Andrew, you know, grandma, that's boring. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, okay, wait, hold on a minute. Public service announcement. Now, for all of you people out there that love um, uh, love grammar, that's fine. I just find it boring. Hey, you have a question from Lola. She said, what is your, what was your greatest fear when you learned English? What was your greatest fear? Hey, G-A-S-E-F, what was your greatest fear of learning English, if anything? I'm like, is my greatest fears of learning English is yeah not be understood. <laughs> so you know what I did because I, I didn't want to have that fear. So we're like, okay, if I don't speak, if I don't try, people will never get what I'm trying to say. Right. So what I did was like face that fear, and I was like, I gotta say something. <laughs> Hello, how are you? I'm I hear what he said, followers. Face your fear. Yeah. Face your fear. Uh, my opinion, listen, people, I want well, to make an I statement. I believe that, thank you, Chris. <laughs> thank you, Chris. Um, I believe that people, I've lived my life in two ways at times. Either in fear or escaping fear. So you have to decide to do that. So, all right. Now, hold on a minute. Followers, this is a PSA. Andrew has some questions for me. Before he got on the live Instagram, he's like, Teacher Will, I got some questions for you. So he's going to ask me some questions. I don't know what the heck they are. Do I know what your questions are, brother? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, last one says, English, English Beast Canna says, What's the best way to deal with bad feelings and emotions if you can't improve your level as fast as you want? 
you know, as I was saying, for example, I was telling teacher Will about like how to face that fear, and I think like the best way to, I mean, everybody of us, you know, like I think the first time is like say this, I mean, but we have to give that a step. If we don't do it, we're never gonna, you know, improve. I mean, so we have to do it. So I think that, for example, you know, a, a very personal advice is like try. I mean, try. You know, like for example, I remember. I was learning and I was sorry? No, I'm sorry, go ahead, bro, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I was, I was in, in a supermarket, so I didn't I didn't know how to speak very well English at the beginning and then I was like, okay, so I need help. I need help. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna say to this uh, sir over here to help me. So and I was like, you know, a little bit shy, so I was like, excuse me, um how or where can I get this product? And yeah, I mean, people is very kind. They help you. Like, oh, hey, this is over here, or you can, you can, you can find it there. Or yeah, I mean, people is very kind. There is not nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, you know, when you're trying, you're learning to. I mean, that's that's a good exercise. Just try it. You know, I mean, right? Yeah. No, I do it. What's Piscata? I would say if you run into people like that, it's reminding the individual like bad emotions or not, you know, not necessarily where they think. It's reminding them, or what I try to do is remind them what's their purpose and goal for doing it. And also, um, uh, also reminding them what's their purpose of learning English and motivating them. I'm like, hey, listen, stop comparing yourself to others. Let's put you on a plan. But kind of be encouraging and motivating and realize and like walk them through the process. Uh, no, hey, hello, hello. He said no, he still wants to, he feels he's good at English. She was asking the question, hello, hello, uh, are you, do you think you're good at English and did you want to learn? He answered that question by saying he wants to learn grammar and he's learning English every day. So it's still, a, it, I'm learning every, learning English every day. So it's a step by step process. LOL, it's good where you're at, just get over your fear, realizing and believing that you can do it, and finding people that are able to be supportive of you, I would say. So, all right, bro, what are your questions, Andrew, while we take questions? Because you were like, I got questions. <laughs> I got questions. Okay, so, here it goes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So here it goes, DJ Will. So, you know, I've been watching, you know, like some of your, like, uh, uh, life, you know, like, uh, lives, and I really liked, like, the way, you know, like, that uh, energy you have. I really love, for example, uh, try, you know, like, to do with my students. I'm, I'm like, sometimes, like, I, I like to move, you know. I'm like, okay, this is this, and this is that. Sometimes I dance, sometimes I play with them. I really like that. And I really like the way, I mean, you do it as well. You have, like, a that energy, you have like that, uh, you know, and I really like because I think we can connect people with that. I mean, people is like there, you know, like learning. And I, I mean, I, I like watching you. I mean, I, I like, you know, like uh, listen uh, as well, like um, the things that you, you say, I mean, like very interesting. So like the question is like, um, you always been like that? I mean, like in the classes or when, what did you change? I mean, in, in, when you started like teaching English, like at the beginning was different than the way that you're doing it now? Oh, you know what? That's a really good question. Um, I think that, okay, so let me say it like this. I'll be short because I know you have a lot of questions. I think, I think uh, when I teach, I'm kind of like on a stage. And so I go to a different line. Are there times where I'm more quiet or is there times where I'm more quiet? Yes. But naturally, my personality is kind of like, I was lucky enough to get like training and T-Soul and stuff, and it's part of my personality. So for me, it's like on a, sp on a stage. My thing is, I'm like, you know what? If, if, if I believe that if a, if a teacher is goofy, if a teacher is funny, if a teacher is authentic to his or herself, yeah. You know, Latin culture and African-American culture have similarities, right? So I use my hands, whatever, like that. So, I don't know if I was born with a lot of energy, because I'll let you in a little secret. When I go into a class, I'm like, bam, I'm, I, I go somewhere. I don't know, I don't know where I go. Like, I'm, I, mean, I, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not drunk, I'm not, none of that crap. I don't drink, I'm none of that. But I just go to a different place, and I try to put myself in the situation of, okay, if I'm silly, my students are going to learn. Um, there are times where I'm quiet, but life for me is on a stage and it was kind of, I was very fortunate. I got trained and that's, but yeah, I mean, 
when learning a second language, English is a second language for a lot of people. So it's kind of like making interactive and using some of the methodologies and, and teaching that I've done. I would say, um, if you saw me after teaching, uh, you would be surprised because I'm actually, I'm very, I'm quiet actually. I'm very quiet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, but, but that's the thing. I mean, you know, during the classes, I mean, look, I try to, I think like that's something important as well. Like, you know, like uh, the people to get connect with, with us as a teachers, you know, so, because I really, I really, I really feel like they are learning. And uh, I really feel that. I think, you know what, and I think it goes to your point. And I learned this, and shout out to you if she's on the call, shout out to one of my directors, Mira. I think what's important is, is that teachers, um, for me, I, I think that it's very uh, important for teachers to know their style and know what they're good at. And, uh, you know, I don't, um, if there were things that, like for example, if there are things, uh, actually there are. Shout out to uh, shout out to Master Your English. There are certain things that Master Your English has done, uh, and I've seen her lives. I've participated in her lives, and there are things that she's done that's really well. And one of the things that I started when I learned in my teaching career is that you know what? If there are things that I think are good that uh, other teachers have done or other students have done, I try to emulate it and make up my own. And so I think it's really important, like. Teachers have to be authentic and whatever style it is. There are some teachers that are not going to be crazy like me. That's not. And there's some teachers, you know, but what's important is, is a teacher finds what works for them by looking at their uh, students. Uh, English Fiscana has a question for you. Um, what book would you recommend? Like a, a fit, one of your favorite books or whatever. <laughs> Lolo says I can't be quiet. This is, a, this is as teacher will. Trust. Anyway, what what book do you recommend? And she wanted to know a favorite book. Okay, but you know, like uh, I really like. You know, it, I think it depends on like uh, what you like to. You know, like, for example, I really like to read books about, as I was telling before, about people who has you know like has started from the bottom and they have reached a lot of goals and now you know I mean. I like to read the process that they've been through. You know, because so what's the name? Of, okay, what's the name of a book? What's the name? Like you like that one? A very, I don't know. A very famous one is uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Ah! Yeah. Yeah. I really like Brother, that I said that. You know what? It's funny. I don't know if you were on the live Instagram, but I'm going to actually do a live Instagram on rich. Well, concepts, financial liberation. But I read that book. That book changed my life. That book changed my life. My life. Yeah. I mean, you know, books like that, that really, you know, like, touch your mind and touch your, touch your brain and it's like, okay, let's fix this. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, there's those. Also, I'm going to type it. I'm going to type it. I'm typing it, sure, followers. Yeah. Well, it's, and you're uh, better, brother. It's, uh, it's such an amazing book because it really, you know, changed your mind and it makes you think differently. You know, like, and as, as I was telling you about English in this case, just love the process. Like, don't focus on just to get there to your goal now. I mean, just love the process and you will learn like faster. <laughs> and right, um, right. yeah, books like that. And for example, and, and another thing, like maybe if you like to read is like, I mean, my recommendation for some of my students is like, instead of books sometimes, like read some like articles. I think it's kind of better because they are more specific about like, I don't know, for example, you like sports. I don't know, so you just go to, uh, uh, a sport magazine and then you will find all the vocabulary there about sport which is like more specific you know because some kind of books are in general they talk about like different things so exactly. i would say like read what you like read what you like start figure out hey followers figure out what you like to read uh, uh andrew recommended uh rich dad poor dad incredible book uh Viscana, i read the godfather i loved it so you know, but again, followers, you read what you like. And articles yeah. is actually a really good thing that uh, Andrew said because articles are shorter and more specific. So, all right. And what's your next question, brother? What's your next question? Okay. My next question is like, for example, you know, like we have students like, I mean, I'm pretty sure you have students from, from different different countries, right? So like uh, you have you, you have like a zero level students, like no English. Oh, true beginners. Or, yeah. Right? Uh, like someone that has zero level, I call them true beginners. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Like not English at all. Let's suppose, for example, 
I'm, I'm from Colombia, so like, hey, hola teacher, well, quisiera aprender inglés, so like, uh, como le hacemos, como hacemos. <laughs> so what would you say then? I mean, like, you have like any, 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 like, I don't know, for example, to understand them, like, do they need like a basic level to start? Or, or, I or how do you approach? Yeah, I think my approach to, uh, I got your question. The name was Piscon. I'm gonna. I got it. Don't worry. I'm gonna answer this. And I'm gonna ask your question. Um, for me, I think that uh, I've taught true beginners. I think it's a lot of repetition. I think it's a lot of uh, music games. Simon says a lot of repeating, um, yeah. teaching ABCs. Um, Maybe. Because, and, and a lot of and a lot of. Um, oh my goodness! I just yes. A lot of. Uh, Verbal body language. I don't care uh, what language you're in. This is. If I do this. That's stop. You know. So if you do this, like a lot of facial body body expression to get yeah. the person comfortable with it. So yeah, I've had experience with that. English Piscana asked you the question, bro. Uh, uh, how to reboot your brain? And I guess I I get what I'm gonna phrase the question in like this is kind of like, hey, how do you train your brain to think in English? Like how, like rebooting your brain, like from translating, from not translating in your native language to in English, is yeah. kind of her question. Okay, yeah. So, well, talking about English, uh, I would say like, you know, like when I was just started, you know, because my, my 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 mother tongue is Spanish, but when I was when I went to live to England, what I did is like. Because I think that's a very common mistake that we do when we learn a new language, is translate everything into our language, you know? And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of, I mean, I would say it's normal because maybe we do that like naturally because we need to understand maybe, but that's not, not a good advice. I mean, you know, as a baby, I come back to that point again, as a baby, you know, a baby sees something and, for example, I don't know, uh, I don't know, a marker, you know, marker. So. Then you just see the marker, you just picture it in your head, you know, you just imagine it, and then you say marker. I mean, just repeat the word, imagine the, the, the object, and uh, then we'll, you will have it better. Like, you know, like humongous, that the word that, that I was saying. So I just, every single time that I listen the word humongous, to my mind comes like a very big, big, big house, or a very right. big, big, big... Picture association, right. Picture association. Followers, listen to what he's saying. It's like, you do. my recommendation is, is like, you don't need to translate every word ideally being immersed and you do not have to be immersed in the united states or the uk you do not have to be immersed so if you're in iran or russia or china or saudi or yemen or spain try to be fully immersed if you want check out a video i did on thai 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 think in english it's possible don't translate every word <clears throat> humongous means very oh man mangoes What's the meaning of mangoes? Mango? Yeah, we're like, oh. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if you're talking about humongous, humongous means very, very big or large or huge. Thank you, A R E. Uh, easy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I meant that. Yeah, humongous. humongous. Yeah. Or gigantic. Like, uh, yeah. like, yeah, like if I don't go to the gym, I become humongous. So that's why I go to the gym. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. What other question you got? Yeah. Another thing is like, for example, like, um, uh, like for example, you know, many, many of my students they are really concerned sometimes about like, hey, Andrew, you know, like sometimes I, I, I think that I speak, but I speak slow, or maybe I, I don't have, you know, like they, they confuse this, they confuse accent and fluency. So okay. what do you think about that? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm gonna be William one moment. Followers, I don't, this is my laptop. Get rid of accent. Everybody has an accent. Worry about fluency. I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. If I hear another follower come to me and be like, I want to, I want accent. <laughs> Listen to me. Yeah. Fluency is more important. I get it. I understand it. But you make a very valid point. I do think that sometimes what happens is followers listen. Just because you just because you speak what is most important to be understood is is that you are being understood and you're being fluent. If you speak yeah. English slowly, it that is there is nothing the matter with doing that. And sometimes people have the perception 
that if you speak English fast, then that makes you a good speaker. Excuse my English, I'm going to say something. Bullshit. Sorry. Okay? I said I'm being William, all right? What is most important is, is that I read to be understood and fluent. If you speak in a slow manner, that is fine. You do not have to be, you don't speak, just because a person speaks fast does not make them a good English speaker. And get off this accent. If you want to have an accent or a native English speaking accent, that is fine. But understand why you are doing it. I don't care if you speak Arabic or Spanish or French or Tagalog or Persian or Chinese or French. Everybody has an accent. Have keep be comfortable with the accent that you're in. I am sick of that question. I love the question, but I, at least I, 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 teacher Will, will tell my followers to focus on fluency. Yeah. Last point I would say on that, and ask me one more question. Followers, there are only on average between 400 million and 450 million native English speaking individuals. Purely by the numbers, purely by the numbers, y'all on this call are learning. So get off this accent. Well, get off of it. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, it's like, it, it, the accent is just part of the personality. So, I mean, it is a part do of your personality. I do not want everybody, like, for example, I'm an American, right? I love, and I think she's on the call. When, when Emma speaks English, Emma, teacher, I'm sorry, pronunciation with Emma is from Britain. I love a British accent. I don't want everybody speaking English like me. I don't want everybody speaking English with an American accent. And oh, by the way, there are different accents in America. Be true to yourself. Worry about fluency. Fluency. <laughs> next question. Yeah. No, <laughs> next one. What is, for example, you know, like um, many, 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 you know, like people as well, it's like when they are learning English, like uh, sometimes they struggle with the listening part. So what, what are you, your recommendations for that? Like how they can improve the listening part? Oh, good question. Uh, I, actually, it was funny. I mentioned this on a previous, uh, uh, the live Instagram before. Uh, there are certain games that you can do. Um, I, uh, yes. Like you can play simple games either by yourself and or uh, with friends. Like if you want to play, when I was a little kid, I played telephone. Telephone is it's like you start, like say there are three people lined up, right? Um, and then you say like, William is a crazy teacher, right? And it starts with Andrew. And by the time it gets over here, you want to see if it's set the right way. So I play the telephone game, for example. Another activity that you can do is some people like it, some people don't. For example, I, I've done this recently with my students because um, we were folk, we were working on business English. So what I did was is that I took like a two minute video on uh, the benefit. What is marketing? And then what I did was is that I had them listen to it. And then we like I stopped it in the middle. I played it like three times. So there are different excuse me activities that you can do around that games. I like spelling videos. Uh, movies. I what I like is is I like sh uh, sometimes short term documentaries. But again, it depends on the level that you are. If you're just starting out in beginners, hey, uh, Simon says, you know, I played a game. Simon says, like Simon says, do this, this. So there are different things that you can do for listening. And again, it depends on the level of the student. Two more questions, bro, because we don't want to go off on time. So go ahead. No, no, no. Yeah. It's cool. I'm just letting you know about the time. That's all. Go ahead. Next question. Yeah. <laughs> so next question is like, um, excuses. You know, there are some students that they are like, I don't practice because of these. I don't practice because I don't have who to practice with. I don't practice because, 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 because. How do you do? with excuses. Beautiful. Very quickly. Hamid, how do we improve our vocabulary? Uh, two quick things. It's like what it's like what Andrew said. You have to build your vocabulary by figuring out new words. Some people find dictionaries boring, others do not. Check out a video that I did on, uh, for, if, you, if you're following for the first time, but there was a video did, Hamid, that I did on building vocabulary. Start word and then build it up. Look for synonyms. Uh, associate contact maps. Uh, maps and roadmaps in your mind okay so you can do it but to a dictionary everyone's not boring if you don't like dictionaries then find another source 
Uh, let me say this. With respect to uh, the question that you just asked, brother, what I would say is is that I've tried... Uh, the beauty of being a teacher, I think, is is that you're many things to many different people. So what I try to do is, is I try to remind them the person for doing it. And um, I've been known to be extremely... Here's a little secret. When I get like this, like, when I get like this, I'm like, you don't find the need to do that? Well, if, you know, if I lower my tone, that's scary, right? So, um, yes, I did. Uh, but what I think is, is that I try to remind the student what is there. And I'm like, you know what? At the end of the day, you're only making an excuse for yourself. And, it, uh, you know, and this is kind of like, you know, if they've just gotten to the point where they make it, I'm like, listen, like I've done this when I'm private tutor. Someone paid me really good money to private tutor and for Saudi dollars and they were lazy. I gave them back their money. Their father was like, no, no, no. I was like, your son is lazy. I don't have any time because I believe my role as a teacher is to empower and motivate people to learn. So at some point, I'm like, no, no, obviously that does not exclude like, God forbid, deaths or emergency situations. But if there's a student lazy, I, cut, I, I have a three strike rule. That's, that's for me. I have a three strike rule. After the yeah. third strike, no, bye. <laughs> time is money, money's time. If you don't care about your education, if you don't care about English, I can't help you. I cannot help you unless you help yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it takes yeah. me I mean, a while. Like, it takes me a while to get there. But I have said that because I'm like, yeah, oh, no. yeah. I mean, you, you, you're totally right. I mean, you know, like that's the thing. Like, uh, you know, like there are some people. I mean, it's better to work with people who's really interested. I mean, who's like there. Right, and I do, the, right. I mean, and our, and our jobs are kind of like, yeah, reason the dollar denominate, uh, not the dollar, the monetary in Saudi Arabia where I live, even though I'm from, um, from America, it's Saudi Real. But what I would say is, I mean, our job is to, you know, empower, motivate, things of that nature. Yeah, students should be eager, ING. Exactly, eager. Um, so that's the thing. Um, and understand it's a symbiotic relationship. We're in this together. I'm not gonna, you know, if, if I'm doing all the work, then what's the value? It's like when some followers ask me like, hey, do your homework. And then they get mad when I say no. I'm like, I will assist you. Yeah. But I'm not doing your homework because you're not learning, right? So, all right. Yeah, I, I, brother. Um, because we got three minutes and I don't want us to get cut off. Uh, English Viscana has the last question for you. What kind of stuff, like, what are your interests? She asked the question, if you're feeling down, if you're not feeling good, what lifts your spirits? What makes you happy beside teaching? Like, anything that lifts your spirits or something you enjoy doing? Music. You know, like, as in music. I time when I went up with the, with the students and I just, you know, play music in the background and I try to, you know, like, move when I'm speaking so that you're like... So, I mean, sometimes they dance too. I mean, like, I try to score them, you know, like, because to make a club boring is so easy. So, at any point, like, it's, it's up to us, like, to make it fun, like, you know, to right. music. I mean, there are a lot of tools nowadays, you know, and it's, it's up to us. Exactly. I mean, I agree. I'm not exactly. No, I agree. One other, bro, I got one other question. Listen, um, uh, I don't know, so I'm going to ask you. Because uh, you're brilliant. I love your energy. I love your vibe. I like your approach to Thank teaching. You. Thank you. Um, and you had the experience of going in. Did you like? Did you or have you considered going to like getting like one of those teaching certifications or like a master's or TOEFL or certification in teaching or anything? Yes or no? Have you done that or I don't? Know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would like to. I mean, I, I've been I've been doing some stuff. Watch this. Watch this. Are you open for some feedback, brother, from one brother to another? Are you open for some feedback? Sure. Good, brother. I highly recommend you have to me, you have all of the qualities of a teacher. You have good energy, you have a sense of self, you have a sense of authenticity, right? And um, yeah. what I would suggest to you is, is that if you have the opportunity and talk, send me a message offline, we'll be there. I highly recommend you get some sort of like sell to Tefl tell because that's all for me. My recommendation for you is you have the energy. Now it's like learn the methodology because you have all of it. It's just owning up on that. And by no means am I criticizing you on that at all because I'm not. That I think is something that's going to take your te your your teaching to a whole another level. Because when you talked about grammar and stuff like that, it's like you have the natural energy because you were immersed in the language and you have the passion and you have the spirit. My only recommendation: get like I'm sorry, get a sheepskin, right? Tell me about it later. Email me later because that's my thing. Now you will be even a better teacher than you are now. 
Like, that's the thing in terms of training on it. But let me say this. Type in your information real quick on the computer. Share your profile. Can you type your profile in? My profile? Yeah. Um, Followers, listen. I'm going to share this contact information um, afterwards. So if you're looking for a teacher online, make sure. Uh, Andrew, are you on? Are you just on uh, Are you just on um, Instagram or are you on anything else? Are you on YouTube? Uh, uh, YouTube. Got it. So followers, listen, that's all of his stuff. I'm going to share his contact information later. Um, good. So you got a first follower, right? So, yes. um, good. Andrew, listen, bro, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. We'll do this Thank again. Make sure we're me. And I, no, come on, bro. We learn together, bro. We learn <laughs> together. So I, I, I really, really do mean that. Listen, if you're free in like 30 minutes, if you're not going to go out and dance and I got another live Instagram, come join if you're free. If not, always beautiful. Followers, you'll see me in about 30 minutes. I got the last Instagram for the night. Thank you, Hearts, for reminding me. If you want to follow me, I'm all on my social media, Snapchat, YouTube, Instagram is ask underscore teacher will so andrew great job send me a message later because i want to talk to you sure, about it okay sure. okay that's it see you guys bye bye, bye. bye. bye.